Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well. I've attempted to do this video as a short, but I am not able to effectively condense the information into a one minute video. And so I'll be doing this as a more of a long format video uh, because I think this is an important step in the right direction when it comes to the management of sepsis. Uh, so this is a study that was recently published in uh, JAMA Internal Medicine on 13 May 2024. The uh, study goes by the name of Mortality of Patients with Sepsis Administered Piperacillin Zobactam versus Cefepime. Uh, so the question that the authors were attempting to ask was in, in patients with sepsis without specific indications for anti-anaerobic antibiotics is the use of a combination of vancomycin plus piperacillin and zobactam associated with increased mortality risk compared with a combination of vancomycin and cefepime. Essentially, they're saying, they're asking, hey, uh, in a lot of the standard ways in which we approach the initial assessment and management of sepsis, uh, we tend to shotgun patients with antimicrobial therapy until we can kind of figure out uh, specific causative agents and then get more specific with our choice of antimicrobial coverage. Um, and so the, the kind of the classic coverage that is often uh, often uh, instituted in, in this case is, includes something like vancomycin that has a fairly broad, you know, gram positive coverage, covers a lot of uh, the resistant uh, organisms, and then adding piperacillin and zobactam to that uh, to kind of enhance gram-negative coverage, you know, E. coli, things like that. And the thinking is that, well, when we're initially working somebody with sepsis up, we may not have a good idea of the, the, the causative organism. And so let's just shotgun them, blast them with everything. And so this study is saying, hey, is that approach, is that necessarily the best approach when compared to other approaches where we're not using these um, heavy hitting broad spectrum antibiotics that may be associated with uh, more side effects. And so that's exactly what they did. Uh, there was a 15 month of piperacillin and zobactam shortage. And so uh, because there was a prolonged shortage of this agent, uh, the authors of the study said, hey, this, this presents with a good opportunity to look at the use of alternative agents and make some comparisons. And so this is a cohort study, just over 7,500 patients with sepsis. Uh, they performed an instrumental uh, variable analysis using that 15 month shortage as I described a little earlier. And uh, essentially the uh, results found that treatment of vancomycin and piperacillin uh, slash zobactam was associated with higher mortality than vancomycin compared with cefepime. All right, so uh, the, the overall findings of the study suggest that for patients with sepsis that don't have any specific requirements for anti-anaerobic agents, uh, a combination of vancomycin and piperacillin slash sobactam may actually pose a greater risk than uh, a more conservative vancomycin and cefepime approach. All right, so that's the 30,000 foot view of this study. Uh, so uh, the design, the specific design setting and participants, this is a retrospective cohort study. So this is not a prospective randomized controlled trial, um, but still I think this does provide some interesting um, information. Uh, and uh, they, it was only one center. Um, so I think it would be very hard to generalize the findings of the study, but it's an interesting step in maybe a right direction and a good step that maybe could help us uh, design additional studies to look at this in more detail. Uh, so this is a retrospective cohort study looking at hospital admis uh, admissions at University of Michigan from uh, July 1, 2014 to December 31, 2018, <clears throat> using the piperacillin zobactam shortage period uh, that occurred. Adult patients uh, with suspected sepsis uh, treated with vancomycin and either piperacillin, zobactam, or cefepime uh, for conditions with presumed uh, uh, equipoise between uh, piperacillin, zobactam, and cefepime were included. Uh, data analysis was conducted and so on and so forth. Uh, so what was the primary outcome of this? 
The primary outcome was 90-day mortality, three-month mortality. Uh, secondary outcomes included organ-free, uh, organ failure-free, ventilator-free, and vasopressor-free days. And the uh, shortage period was used as the instrumental variable for unmeasured confounding in antibiotic selection. All right, so what were the results? Uh, so again, just over 7,500 patients were enrolled in the study, the median age of about 63. Uh, let's see here, four, just over 4,500 were treated with vancomycin and piperacillin and zobactam, and just over 3,000 were uh, treated with vancomycin and cefepime. Um, of the patients received uh, who received the uh, piperacillin and zobactam plus vancomycin, uh, only 152, about 3% of it, received it during the shortage. Treatment groups did not uh, differ significantly in age. Uh, Charleston comorbidity index score, sequential organ failure assessment, the SOFA score, or time to antibiotic administration. So they did attempt uh, to, uh, uh, to try to eliminate some common sources of bias in the study by looking at these things. Um, in an instrumental uh, variable analysis, Pepercillin and Zobactin was associated with an absolute mortality increase of 5% at 90 days, 95% uh, confidence interval 1.9 to 8.1%, um, and 2.1 uh, with a confidence interval 95%, uh, 1.4, 2.7 uh, days, uh, fewer organ failure-free days as well as 1.1 with a 95% confidence interval of 0.57 to 1.62, fewer ventilator-free days. And then finally, a 1.5 in the 95% confidence interval, uh, confidence interval ran between 1.01 to 2.01, fewer ventilator-free days. Uh, that's fairly... Uh, I'm not super um, blown over by those uh, values, although the absolute mortality increase of 5% is somewhat compelling. Um, so I would say that there look, looks to be uh, some signal here in absolute mortality that the uh, absolute mortality uh, was a little higher uh, in uh, the uh, Piperacillin and Zobactam group. Uh, and slightly fewer uh, organ failure-free days as well as ventilator-free days and vasopressor-free days. Um, so uh, essentially, the results, I would say, were pretty modest that th there was, uh, as far as uh, the primary and secondary endpoints, uh, there was a you know, very modest... Um, a signal in the the more uh, or the less aggressive antimicrobial coverage group, sh shall we say. Um, their conclusions were among patients with suspected sepsis and no clear indication for anti-anaerobic coverage. Administration of piperacillin and zobactam was associated with higher mortality and increased duration of organ dysfunction compared with cefepime plus vancomycin. Uh, these findings suggest that widespread use of empirical anti-anaerobic antibiotics and sepsis may be harmful. Uh, and um, obviously there's some limitations here, um, but I suspect that this might be an interesting paper for you to take back to your facilities and look at this and uh, work with your infectious disease teams and the protocols and your uh, goal-directed therapy protocols or whatever um, protocols you have in place to uh, address sepsis and maybe take this into consideration and perhaps uh, uh, avoiding uh, the use of piperacillin and zobactam um, when anti-anaerobic coverage is, is not likely to be needed um, might be a helpful thing and might actually help patients. Clearly, additional studies are needed we, you know, we, uh, a prospective, randomized, uh, multi-center trial would be the gold standard. But, um, you know, it, I think it would be fairly easy for additional centers to do a kind of study like this where they can make some comparisons and maybe even um, go back and do some retrospective comparisons, pull charts from, from this time. 
um, and then try to uh, develop uh, groups of patients that are roughly equivalent and see if any kind of uh, uh, signals can be detected and then those can be published and if enough of these kinds of studies are, are published uh, it, it is perhaps uh, possible that we could detect a more broadly applicable signal um, in a future meta-analysis or systemic review. Uh, either way, I think this is a, a pretty compelling uh, little study with, with all of its flaws um, and limitations. Uh, I still think it's compelling and I, I still think it makes a good case for um, maybe not being as a uh, shotgun in our approach to uh, managing sepsis. And, and I think it's always worth noting that whenever you are looking at administering something like an antimicrobial agent, uh, there are certainly um, a risks and a good risk benefit analysis uh, should be done. And this is just uh, an, some additional information that could help us in that risk benefit analysis and ultimate uh, decision making when it comes to uh, choice of antimicrobial coverage earlier on in the management of sepsis patients. So that's my take on this. And hopefully you all enjoyed this uh, review of this newly published study. Thank you all so much. Take care. Bye-bye.